Hello, this is Leda Meredith, delighted to be back with Ancient Roots Israel. And on today's plant walk, we are going to be talking about Passiflora, passion fruit. And we'll be covering both the edible and medicinal uses. So Passiflora, there are almost 500 Passiflora species worldwide. Most are indigenous to the Americas but there are some in Eastern and Southern Asia. There's even one species that only grows in New Zealand. There are no native species in Israel, but this one, Passiflora incarnata, which originally comes from North America, is very widespread. It grows really well here. It's often planted as a garden plant and sometimes has escaped to grow fairly or wild. Passiflora is a vine and it will climb and clamber over other plants using, let's see if I can show you one of these, these little curly tendrils to hook onto other plants or fences or trellises. So right here, this one that I'm looking at is actually, we've got two plants here. This is the Passiflora vine and this smaller leaf plant is the bush that it's climbing over. Um, the Passiflora has toothed leaf margins, a lobed or palmate leaf, a fruit, I'm going to actually show you the fruit before we talk about the flower even though the flower comes first because you'll see why. Here's a fruit. This one's not quite ripe yet. And then this amazing, amazing, crazy looking flower. Nothing else looks quite like a passion fruit flower. Passiflora, which means passion flower, passion fruit, got its name when in the 17th century, Christian Spaniards who were conquering the Americas first encountered it. And they found it to be full of symbolism for them relating to the passion of Christ as the story is told. They thought that these tendrils looked like the whips with which he was beaten they thought that the 10 white petals, if you can see there are these white petals in the back, the bottom layer, represented the 10 faithful apostles, that this purplish and white layer of filaments here represented the crown of thorns that he was forced to wear, that the three pistols in the center were the three nails that nailed him to the cross, and so on and so forth, all kinds of symbolism. So hence, um, Passiflora, passion flower, uh, named by the Spaniards in the 17th century for the passion of Christ. I'm going to get into the medicinal uses first, and then we'll talk about the edible fruit. Um, so the medicinal parts you can use, the tendrils, the leaves, the stems, the flowers, basically everything aerial except the fruit. And the properties of this plant are quite wonderful. It's very soothing, it's a calmative, um, it's a nervine, it's specific for the kind of insomnia that comes from your brain spinning over and over with the same worry and you just need to break the loop. This is your friend for that. It is also an anodyne, meaning pain relieving. Uh, it is also anti-inflammatory. So the combination of pain relieving and anti-inflammatory means it's excellent for like a twisted ankle or any kind of impact injury like that. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, it's also used for insomnia. It's used for anxiety and depression. It's used for menstrual cramps and PMS moodiness and also menopausal moodiness. Um, all of these, it's often combined with other herbs and it does really well in combination with other herbs. So I might, um, for example, if I was giving it to somebody for PMS symptoms, I might combine it with motherwort, which is also might be a nice combination for depression. Um, if I was doing it for insomnia, depending on the cause of the insomnia, I might combine it with valerian or hops or even chamomile. It is used fresh or dried as an infusion or a tincture. And if you want more specific information about ratios and dosage for the infusion and the tincture, 
I highly recommend chestnutherbs.com. That's chestnutherbs.com. And they have a lovely article on Passiflora with very, very detailed information about dosages. It is considered safe for children and uh, has been used when kids are basically climbing the walls and you want them to calm down a little bit. Um, the dosages are different, so do check out that dosage information at chestnutherbs.com. Passiflora incarnata, which is the most common species here in Israel, the fruits, these are underripe, but they will eventually turn kind of a dusky purple. The flesh inside is bright orange with black seeds. There are other species that are yellow on the outside, like Passiflora edgeless, which grows in Central and South America. The flesh and the flavor and the uses of the medicinal parts are very similar between all of them. One thing that's interesting, though, is we, in modern times, use the leaves and the flowers as medicine, and we eat the luscious fruits. But there are ethnobotanical records of the Cherokee and other Native Americans using the roots of Passiflora externally. They were used to draw out splinters and thorns and reduce the inflammation and redness caused by splinters and thorns. They were rubbed on the teeth and gums of babies that were teething and generally used as a, as a poultice or a compress, an external application. So here is a passion fruit that I harvested and it's basically a sacrifice to this plant walk because you can see it's completely green. No hint of the purple that it will eventually have. And also, you can't tell this from the video, but it feels light. And I, that lets me know that the pulp, that beautiful, delicious orange pulp inside has not developed yet. Um, so if I cut this one open full size, this is about the size you want, but no hint of purple yet and feeling light, it's going to look like this. And you can see that there's this thick layer around the rind that will stay, but there's no orange pulp yet in the center. Now, if I wait and harvest this, this size, but when some purple streaks have started to form on it, I don't actually have to wait for it to get all the way purple on the vine. As long as it is showing some purple, I can save it at room temperature on a counter for a few days. It will turn completely purple. It may even get a little wrinkly on the outside. And at that point, when I open it up, it'll be full of that delicious aromatic orange pulp. That ripe Passiflora fruit that I just showed you in the photo is from the same vine that I'm showing you now with unripe fruit. And we were harvesting it. That photo is from February. And then the vines took three months off and now they are fruiting again. And so if you have year round access to a Passiflora vine, you can expect multiple fruitings. Once you've got some ripe passiflora, you can just cut it in half and slurp up the pulp and the seeds. The seeds are perfectly safe and edible altogether. Um, but if you want to use it in a recipe or, I mean, it's fantastic in fruit salad, in muffins, in my favorite chia pudding, which I'm about to give you the recipe for, uh, you will want to remove the seeds and the seeds do kind of stick to the pulp or vice versa So here's a little tip that I got from a friend in Hawaii where passiflora is called lilikoi Put the pulp seeds and all scoop it out of the shells In a blender and pulse 10 to 15 times don't leave it running because that'll grind up the seeds but just pulse and it detaches the pulp from the uh, seeds and then it's very easy to just strain through a strainer or a colander and now you have just the luscious aromatic pulp and juice. Okay, I hope that was useful. Uh, please send any questions my way about Passiflora. And please do check out my website. I'll provide the link uh, in the next bit. 
Um, also my YouTube channel, there's more plant videos, recipes, uh, info about my books, etc. there. So please do check that out. And it's been a pleasure sharing this plant that I love with you.